guys, this is Jun because as Bunny Jun, welcome to my amazing life today. So in today's episode, I'm going to explore with you. What if someone don't reply you in Facebook Messenger, don't reply to your message in WhatsApp, and then even though you are follow up with a sale. So what do you do and how to make them reply? So stay tuned to the end to find out. No matter in what kind of niche or what kind of clients you're serving, definitely we will be in this kind of scenario where I call it in Malaysia, I call it as a blue tick scenario. So why do I name it as a blue tick scenario when someone goes missing? It's because in the WhatsApp, you will receive like two blue tick. They read it, they saw your message, but then they are just not replying to you. So before we go and dive in how to solve this issue with four simple techniques that I always use, of course, I can't really get 100% success rate, but, but if let's say the person is someone who is really genuine with your services, definitely they will actually get a reply with these four tips, okay? Before we dive into these four tips, let's think about a psychology, if let's say we are the client, we are the prospect, why if a seller trying to follow up with us, we saw the message and then we decided to blue tick them, okay? So for me personally, if let's say I decided to blue tick is because for, there are a lot of reasons. One of it is because right now is not a time for me to think about this topic right now. Okay, I want to revisit this topic, but then right now I, I couldn't I couldn't have time to evaluate probably because I'm in a meeting. Later on, I have like few tasks to do. I want to delay these decisions to a later time, um, maybe in the evening when I'm when I'm having time, right? So that's why I saw the message. I tend not to reply. So the second type that. I tend not to reply is that I find like this seller is trying to pitch to me very hard, very salesy, forcing me, making me to make a decision to commit to his or her service today. Okay, so I bump into this kind of seller all the time, most of the time, like I would say about maybe 60% of the sellers or the services I'm asking to, they are going into this route, right? And then the other 40%, they will actually respect that I need some time in order to make our informed decisions. That's why they're okay to wait for me, okay? So sometimes I'm talking about follow-up, follow-up is about um, a balance, it's follow-up is about you are you need to reach an equilibrium that it's okay to follow up at this frequency but how frequent you should follow up it depends on the style of the clients that you are you are dealing with okay so um i have recently i actually make a post in one of the group because i want to do some survey so in the group i actually i wanted to know how much youtube marketing uh, will cost how much you'll be charging right so i put a post in the facebook group i say hey guys who are the expert in youtube marketing so can you guys tell me more more about your services and charges and etc so you can actually pm me okay so let's use this as an experiment right i got about six to seven uh, sub, um, I would say six to seven vendors, the friends who actually provide these services PM me personally. Most of them, they are strangers to me, right? So I received three, three of them. They actually, when they PM me, they said, uh, what is your budget? They directly asked me, what is my budget? That's the first question. Or the second question is that they will, they will be asking, hey, June, I heard that you need YouTube advertising. Can I know when are you free to have a talk directly on the phone call? I was like stunned. I think about it, that wasn't the question I'm asking for. Like seriously, if let's say we are strangers directly asking me for budget without understanding my objective, it's really a no-go strategy for me because to me, you are focusing on closing me rather than focusing on helping me to achieve the goal. Okay, if let's say you do not know what is the goal that I want to achieve? How are you able to try to close me, right? You, you, you don't even know what I want. Like, how can you close me for that? So that's the reasons that um, I see these are the mistakes that every um, most of you guys should avoid when you're providing a service when you're trying to close someone's. But back to our topic. So if let's say someone's really blue to you, it can be fall under this category where they felt like, oh my God, you focus more on yourself rather than helping me. Um, that's why I decided to blue tick, right? That could be one of the reasons. But how to basically handle that? Here, I have two tips. So first tip, I will call it as a, I shared it before. This tip, I call it as soft follow-up. 
So what do we mean by soft follow up? Okay, let's remember the last time that your friend commented com commented on your photo of you going out, or maybe commented on a photo of you sharing a really awesome stuff, or like eating or having a really really nice dinner with your family and friends. Let's think about that. If let's say someone comment on your post, it can be a Facebook post, LinkedIn post, Instagram, they comment on something that is very lifestyle related of you. What is the tendency of you will be replying? Most likely very high, right? So if let's say you the, the person they've been talking to hasn't been replying to you, this is what you should do. Go to their Facebook or Instagram, not to become like too stalk, stalky, I would say, like become a stalker, right? Just to pick two, one or two posts that leave genuine comments that comment purely on their, perhaps on their life, okay? So because when you comment that, it's really hard for someone to ignore your message because you are just trying to be friendly. You are just trying to be their friends, okay? So usually, I will also try to start a conversation by asking a question related to the photo or a recent post they are having. Okay, so tip number two, you can use this power phrase. This power phrase, it did not come from me. I actually read this book called, oh my god, I forgot the book name. I actually read this book. It's a really, really awesome book. I will, I will need to find a book's name for you guys, but I shared it before. So you use, use these two phrases. The first phrase is called, it looks like. The second phrase is called, it seems like. Oh, let me repeat it. It looks like or it seems like so what 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 how do i use it so let's say someone had someone asking me about my coaching program probably they haven't been replying me for a while after we discuss about something right i'll probably send a message uh they blew to me okay i'll probably send a message hey amy it looks like you're having um you are, you, have, you you need you are busy right now and you need more time in order to evaluate this coaching program am i correct Okay, so that's the first first example, right? Okay, what do we attach things at the back of the it looks like it's some of the hypothesis that you think that your prospect is thinking. Let's say in your scenario, you know that your prospect is thinking about a price. Maybe the price is too expensive for them, or maybe they just simply that do not have enough time to think about that, right? You can use this phrase by guessing. Put up your hypothesis and your assumption at the, at the end. So in this scenario, I'll say. Hey Amy, it looks like the price is something of your concerns. Am I correct? Okay, so when you ask this question, this three three wording it lower the guard of the person they are talking to. Okay, because you you're just giving them like you what would you say? You give them an an avenue to tell you, yeah, I'm having a little bit time, I'm having a little bit issue with the pricing, so that's why I need more time. You're giving them an avenue to tell you what is the real issue. So you then it will be your task later on in order to handle the objections. So these two words, um, it looks like and it seems like these two phrases I use it all the time and it's really really very working because I don't give people the pressure of having to reply to you. I would just say, hey, you know what? I'm just guessing that you have this issue. So is that correct? Okay. So that is the third, second, second tip, right? What is the third tip? Third tip is that we always need to lower the guard of our prospect. But then how do we lower the guard of our prospect? Okay. Um, this is how our mind works. When we want to lower the guard of our prospect, we need to seem like we don't want to sell them anything. We need to let them know that, hey, you know what? It's all right that if let's say you decided not to go to, it's perfectly fine. So we want to let them not to feel guilty about saying no to us because a lot of us we are just trying to be the nice guy the nice lady on earth like telling someone no it's like so excruciating right so that's why if let's say you want to lower the guard this is what you can tell them like at a very last stage of you deciding of whether you want to continue for love i will probably use this phrase i will say hey amy you know what don't worry if let's say you're not interested in this program. I'm perfectly fine. But I just want to ensure that you make an informed decisions. Even though, even though you decided not to go on with this program, I'm happy to share other other information that can help you along the way as well. So what do you think? Okay? So let me break it down to you. This there are two uh, phases in it. The phase number one is that I'm telling her that don't feel guilty. It's really alright. If let's say you decided to say no. 
to us, I would probably would rather to have a yes or no rather than have, you know, somewhere in the middle to think about that, not answering you, right? So at the second part, I'll also tell them that, hey, don't worry, even though you decided no, not, not to go after, I'm still happy to help you because I have some shared resources that I think can help you along the way. Of course, from a content creator or from a coaching program, um, coach perspective, when I want to share stuff that is for free, definitely I wouldn't want to use my personal time so much much right in order to close someone who don't want to be close right now so in this kind of scenario i will use free stuff like uh, free stuff it means that it wouldn't take my personal time it can be like an ebook that you have been writing for a special bonus or it can be a special training program which we already pre-recorded previously but then because you want to help this person you can send the video or any other bonuses to help this person okay because remember Sometimes it take a long time to make a decision in order to buy something. And then sometimes someone need to watch you for 60 days. Someone need to follow you maybe for 30 days. Or some people just need to follow you for few months in order to buy something from you, right? So if let's say you be the kind of person, oh, you're not interested, then forget about it. You are just wasting your lead because you need to know. A relationship is something very hard to build, okay? So don't waste any other chance that you can give someone some free help without without using your personal time, okay? The fourth tip, okay, the fourth tip is really the third tip. The fourth tip is about even though someone decided not to go on with you anyway or they decided to blue tick you after you try the tip one, tip two, and tip three, right? Okay, this is the last chance you can do. You know what? If let's say someone asks for advice regarding a certain topic, maybe someone come to me talking about they're having problem with closing deals okay but then i know that I decided to not to go of my any of my programs that i'm having right i will still probably share the one last thing to them and say hey you know what i have this free ebook and it's really um uh, extra bonuses i don't really give out to my friends for free but then because i know that we have this kind of relation we have this chat i believe that this can help you anyway even though that you do not go on with the coaching program or you do not go on with the program i'm having so yeah just ask me anything if let's say you read this ebook you have any any question i'm happy to help okay so remember this if how you're able to make a sale there are a lot of different factors but also one very important factor is what kind of person you are even though people decided not to go on a deal with you. That is very, very important because how we um, how we handle a rejection from someone, it says a lot about ourselves. Imagine this, today you say no to someone else, but then that someone is still willing to help you anyway. How do you feel? Okay, you'll probably say like, hey, maybe this time I'm not buying from you. It's just because the program is not suitable. It's just because that you're giving me a solution that I did not need, but Sometime in the future, this person is going to buy something from you. I have encountered so many different times throughout my businesses, not only not only the current business and also for my previous business, people always come back when they feel like they are they they not they are not being forced to buy something from me and then I'm willing to help for free. Okay? So that's the reason why that we have been doing so many different ebooks, giving out ebooks, giving out free trainings, masterclass, as well as like videos to teach people so many different things because we want to build the relationship we want to give values in advance okay so i hope that you find values in this video if let's say you're watching this remember to subscribe our youtube channel okay we have so many different different videos organized in different playlists like like even i have one friend he told me that by watching my videos he closed his first sale in his life like it's about one thousand dollar and then he earned like five hundred dollar and then we haven't really spoken he just told me that he'd been watching my video secretly so if let's say you're watching right now you know who you, who you are i'm waiting for a testimony okay but then i know that you're not you're having a hard time so get well soon okay so that's that's one of the one of the things that you can do and also you can also join my group it's called amazing story group you can go to www.amazingstory.co as well i have this free ebook for you guys who are just starting out to hire a virtual assistant okay when you are building a business you are going to have so many different tasks that's on you but we can't do everything ourselves that's why we need to leverage the time of other people that's why i have this ebook about 10 pages long i'm teaching you how you can hire your first virtual assistant or hire an assistant very effectively and efficiently and the book is free okay i'm going to put the link down below so feel free to grab it if less you're interested as well what else oh yeah i have a podcast okay so in my podcast 
I will, I'm giving you a new avenue in order to absorb the knowledge I'm sharing because I know that not everyone are videos version video person right if let's say you're an, you are an audio person I have this this podcast I'm going to put the link down below as well as I'm an Instagram Facebook group and everything so feel free to follow me okay and I'm going to launch a uh, coaching program very soon to teach you guys how to close deals faster and I'm still in a um, in the mid, midst of uh, sorting out a lot of back end stuff like preparing all the materials so if let's say you have uh, some questions that about cl- closing deals that you always face this problem and you want answers feel free to reach out to me because I'm planning to have some free resources for you guys so that i can put it in the waiting list as well so that's all of my sharing today i look forward to see you guys tomorrow bye